So let's talk a little bit about forming that culture where it's familiar, people become friends, um, and as a result, you are able to have, you know, it, it's even tougher to have some of these difficult conversations. What are some things we can do process-wise with, with committee structure, rotating leadership, things like that, that can kind of unhinge a little bit of that super comfortable atmosphere that causes people to be more performance oriented and less friendship clubby oriented? Well, I think you gotta start again. I mean, I, mean, I think it starts with, with having written processes where it's clear what the expectations are for everyone from participating in board meetings to uh, any aspect of board service and on board that very clearly. Um, you know, I think also your board chair or your leadership or your lead independent director, depending on your situation, um, even though board culture, I think, is the responsibility of all directors, um, I think that that leadership bears, um, bears a lot more of the responsibility. They can and should be the culture carrier. Now, sometimes we see that in the non-gov chair. Sometimes we see outsized influence by more tenured, more senior directors. Those are all dynamics um, that drive this whole culture conversation because you seem to have a strata within the boardroom. Some people feel more comfortable directing, stating their opinion, disagreeing with other directors. Others, especially in this world now where we're having younger directors, less experienced directors, I think, Sort of the, the phrase I hear is this, or this psychological comfort, uh, a comfort yeah. to speak up at the board table even though you're younger, you're less experienced. And so I think creating an environment where the standards are clear, the expectations, everybody knows what they are, and leadership enforces them will change that dynamic. Leadership. But, but we have to stand up and do it to, yeah. to people who we're friends with, people who we've worked with, people who we're colleagues with. That, at this club or wherever we are. Le leadership is essential. Um, so a question I would have for both of you is, what happens if the leader is the problem? What happens if the chair, and, and you know, I see some heads nodding here. What happens if the chair is the one that keeps it clubby and keeps it clicky? What do you do? Well, I think you, Sorry, that, go, was, go, go. that wasn't one of the questions we agreed I would ask. Sorry, that's a, that's a surprise. Go. Go. But, but, it's a val but it's a valid question. Yeah, it, it's, it's a great it's question. Real. It's, it's, real. it's real. It's absolutely a valid question. Uh, I, I think you have to do, uh, so I go back to the critical principle here. Being on a board is service. It's not a job. And oh, by the way, I believe as a human being that I need to be getting energy from places uh, more energy from them than I'm putting in. So my advice to anyone where there's a situation where it's the chair or somebody in a position of leadership is you spend some time trying to make a change. And if you can't make that change, then don't run, run for re-election. Yeah. Period. That's it. Why, why subject yourself to something that you are having to put a huge amount of energy into that you're not looking forward to? I mean, you, you all know the, the board pack is 500 to 1,000 pages. If you're lucky, you know, if you have maybe a small board, it, I don't know anybody has something under 400 pages. Anybody in here have a board pack that's less than 400 pages? I mean, come on, you got all that work to do. If you're not having fun at it, if you're not looking forward to it because of the dynamic on the board, just don't run for re-election, full stop. That's it, that, I mean, that, that's literally all you can do because it's service, it's not a job. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I. I stepped off a large cap board a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, for a variety of reasons. Um, the biggest reason was I was on for 16 years. But the other reason is because, you know what? My time was done. The, the, to be able to look at, your, look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? This is not what I want to be spending time doing. Because if you do it right, it's a lot of time. I've got other things other boards, other opportunities that will happen, and I'm done. And, and that, you know, it's important to do that. It's important as directors. We owe it to the executives 
that we support, that if you feel like you can no longer add value or as much as you did, to not be afraid of walking away. Well, and that's why we sort of talked a little bit about, you know, putting some of these things in writing so that at some point it becomes obvious to everybody around the table, either through performance um, or otherwise, that you have problem directors. Yeah. And hopefully that will give the, the psychological safety, whatever you think you need, for a majority of board members to say, we need to come together and ask our chair to step down. Um, and if you're not willing to do that, then, I mean, to me, especially if it's impacting the board's performance, which means it's probably impacting the company's performance, and I would suspect that your fiduciary duty requires you to do that. I mean, it's interesting. All of us read the news articles about companies that do ridiculous things and do stupid things. And, and the first thing we always ask, at least I do, is where was the board? Where, where was the board, right? And so if we can do that as a third party when you're reading an article in the paper, then we should certainly do it holding a mirror up to ourselves and saying, are we being the best stewards of this business, representing people who can't be in the room? Is this the right group of people? And that's, you know, it, it's uncomfortable for many, but in this day and age, essential because of everything these companies are facing. Absolutely. Right? I mean, it's, it's, um, it's our job. It's, it's what we're supposed to do. It's service. It's what we signed up for. And, and oh, by the way, um, if an activist comes to see you, they will find you out. That's right. Right? Uh, the good, activists good have, they, they have a they have a very very keen sense of who they believe is performing and who's not. Sometimes it's right and sometimes it's not so right. But at the end of the day, uh, invite an act, you know invite an activist to be in because the board has been dysfunctional and the company's not performing, and uh, you know that gets turned over on its head really really fast. And they'll they'll find that uninvolved director that doesn't really prepare is not really engaged. Well, the, in those situations. The, and the interesting thing is, if, if an activist can sense there's problems, I mean, all they need to do is talk to some of the executives. It, it doesn't take much for, for activists to figure out who's prepared, who's doing their emails at board meetings. You know, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a secret. It, everybody, everybody knows, right? 